I don't even know what to pick right now. Half me wants to escape. And the other half wants to live. What? He is, of course, referring to the now infamous Booger and the Ghost live concert extravaganza. Well, uh, this all leads up to the concert event of 2004. They tell us, uh, we want a big production. We're like, don't worry, we're going to give you a big production. I'm going to make them wish that they never invited us to play. Which later they did. I'm um, Janine, I think it's going to go fabulous and hilarious. Either the house is going to burn down or someone's going to die. Or it was the music event of the millennium. Or failing that, at least on that particular night, and nerves were setting in. Oh, I hear good things about that show. One fun, the only ever show we ever did. I heard that Jock Jam drank 500 beers in one minute. It's all there. So just relax. I heard Phil Fettuccini's mustache came off and there was a smaller, lighter mustache underneath. Alright, I'm not really nervous to play. I just want to get over with. I'm going to go change. I heard Dave was drunk. We can't find the streamer and the... I think I'm supposed to get White Castle stickers. I'm nervous. I heard there was a monkey throwing bananas. She won't want it, huh? They gave us a guy in a gorilla costume. Uh, they called him the Cash Money Gorillionaire, and they gave him 40 pounds of bananas. The crowd soon grew unruly as the band was plagued with technical difficulties. <laughs> We don't need plugs, we just have God. In Billy Hill's new outlook on life would do little to help the equipment problem. We don't need plugs, we have Jesus. And I was playing the whole time and somebody told me Jesus don't know how to use magical instruments. I thought he did. Some kind of spell, voodoo curse, I don't know, some shit like that. I thought I was stroking my bass, I was just stroking my ego. How do you think the show's gonna go? Beer tastic! DMC's negative influence only fueled Jock Jam's alcohol induced rampage. Yeah! Things were getting so bad that he'd, he'd forget that he was even in Booger and the Ghost. There's a problem. Oh, no. After Wait. After Wait. The lead singer isn't here yet. Oh, bro. He's not here. We have to wait. Where's the lead singer? We have to wait. Shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm the lead singer. I may have ruined Jock Jam's career. No, seriously, I may have done it. I don't know. I don't remember anything. I don't even. I didn't even remember who I was that night. <laughs> Where's Roller? I'm Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Everything after that was all a blur, and I mean, up to and including right now, like all this is really blurry. The show ended with disastrous results. <laughs> By the end of the night, the entire basement smelled like bananas. Our fans were sodomized and crying. Uh, some of them were unidentifiable. It was just incredible. He hit me in the finger with a drumstick. And the band broke up. Some of the band members struggled on under the Booger and the Ghost moniker, while Jock Jams let people pour coffee on his crotch for money. Fucking pathetic. The world had forgotten about Booger and the Ghost. The gang reunited in the studio for one last ditch effort at a comeback. He's used to be fun. Alright, look. <laughs> but the band quickly resorted to violence and began attacking one another with a barrage of whips, canes, and high school varsity wrestling moves. I told you boys not to mess around with my kitty litter. The now legendary, unfinished Booger and the Ghost album, Exploding Titties in G Flat, would never see the light of day. Booger and the Ghost were no more.